He is a producer, manager, professional drummer, and freelance audio video technician. Welcome to the show, Levi Watson. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, man. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah. So, uh, so are you, you're, you're not a freelance, right? You don't, you're not tied down or are no, you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm freelance. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. I've got a production company that I do a lot of events. I do my own events. Uh, we do music. We do same kind of stuff. Some of them, I actually do the whole bit rentals, uh, rent gear, oversee some hotels when they wow. have uh, people out and filling in for things. And that's awesome. So we're kind of a spread wide which okay. uh, part of our goal this year is to consolidate some of that. The, uh, yeah. I've, uh, uh, the freelance side of it's gotten pretty busy. So, uh, okay. It keeps me traveling. Yeah. So you, I, I was going to say I'm you put a lot of miles, right? Putting a lot of miles in, not a lot of miles on in a car miles on the air. So, Oh, flying. Oh, yeah, that's what so, you mean. Yeah, exactly. So I've got a few, I've got a, couple months this year already that I'll be gone virtually the entire month. So wow, keeps me on the road, but it'll be good this year because they're in places where I've got a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. So trying to incorporate some visits into, into the travel as well. But as you know, their productions are long days. So they are, they are Yeah, kind of, I, I miss it a little bit, but, but they're part of it. I don't miss to either, you know, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, the consistency, but, um, Man, it looks like you got a, a great studio there behind you. Is that kind of your home? Uh, is that your home? Yeah, this is my home control room, kind of the, you know, my office. So yeah. I'll mix and master and do all that good stuff in here and overdub tracks and, you know, make make beats, make uh, make music and hold our meetings and stuff here. So cool. So are you, how many bands do you manage? Because I know you, ma you manage some bands, right? Yeah, we manage a couple bands and we I play in bands too as well. So I'm currently in four bands. So uh, really, but really only I would say more full time in two of four. Are they so, cover or cover bands? Yeah, or yeah. Well, uh, one one does orig some originals. Well, a couple of them do originals, but most it's mostly covers. Most cool. covers if that works out. It's kind of hard to be in an original band unless you're continually in it doing yeah. it. And yeah. those days for me, I, I did that. And uh, it's a lot of work. It was amazing. I loved it. But at the same time, it's a, uh, you know, unless I'm making, I think my creative juices get uh, filled up when I'm working with new artists, people that are hungry, that are willing to put the time in and helping collaborate with them to get to the next level versus me. I don't find myself writing something. I'm like, oh man, this is something I want for me. Yeah. I'm more like, I want to help you get somewhere. And then I don't want to do that other section of what it takes. So if you're in it and committed, man, I'll help you. But uh, I know what it takes and it's not necessarily the road I want to do. So, yeah. So yeah. Um, cover bands allow you to go and play shows out and, and uh, play in front of people and, and you kind of get, uh, there you go. There's business right there. There's money coming in, right? There's money coming in. Uh, yeah. So um, you, you play, uh, what instrument do you play? Drums professionally. I play okay. a little bit of guitar, bass, keys. You know, I fumble around. I'll say I fumble around on those. I do bass a little bit more than anything else, but drums is what I, that's what I spend my time doing. It seems, uh, especially in the Seattle area, drum drummers are few and far between as far as guys that can step in and do a lot of stuff. So gotcha. it's amazing the number of calls I get to fill in and play shows and uh, fill in for bands. I've gotten to play with a lot of really cool bands, uh, fill in for a lot of different types of shows, everything across the board, different spectrums. And uh, I think it's really easy as a musician to take for granted what you can do. Uh, you know, you, I just assume what I do is what most people can do. I don't, I don't really think of it as being that special. And then you know, I'll get a list of 60 songs and I've got, you know, three days to know them to show up and play. And <laughs> it's not a big deal where I've come to learn working with enough artists over years that it's like, that's not normal. That's not the thing. So yeah, uh, even when they are cover songs to get them right and to be able to, to play with everybody and just pull that off the top of your head. So I'm always amazed when I see a, a good cover band. I mean, see them, see them, you know, at, at galas and stuff all the time. And, yeah. and it's like, 
man, these guys are tight and they know exactly what songs are going to move the crowd. And it's really a, I think it, it's definitely a, a skill to, mm -hmm. to be able to put together a good cover band. Yeah. It's a different set of skills too. You know, I, I started out with a cover band, you know, garage band, let's call it garage band, and then worked into original music. And then came back around to cover bands. And when I came back around to cover bands that were starting to play the, you know, casinos and weddings and big venues and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you definitely respect it because the crowd has a certain expectation and you have to let things go as well because there are things, you know, I've played in bands that have lots of backing tracks and bands that refuse to use backing tracks. And it's funny when you play in a band with backing tracks that you've got a horn section playing and there's no <laughs> horn section and the audience is like, man, you guys are amazing. You sound so good. And you're like, that's a track, but you yeah. know, you have to get, but they're willing to pay big money for that stuff because it makes them feel like they're in it and the experience matters. And you know, the talent that you have, a lot of really talented musicians and you find as a drummer, the key is not necessarily, you know, there's a million drummers that can do the, some songs, but it takes somebody who actually can drive the beat to take it to the next level and can keep that flexibility that's needed in that. So. Gotcha. What's, what's your favorite style to play? What do you, what do you like the best? Oh, the, the famous question, right? Right. You know, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, I, here's what I can, I think I've finally, I think I've been asked that question a hundred times over the years yeah. and I keep trying to figure the answer out. I think I may be getting there now. I think the answer for me is anything that I'm not bored with at the time. Gotcha. I can't, I can't. The reason I like to be in multi bands as well is I can get bored if I'm doing one style or one thing for too long. So I'll work on something hip hop and edm and then i'll work on a country thing and then i'll work on a hard rock thing and then an alternative nice. 90s thing yeah. and it keeps me moving i it's even the way i listen to music i can't listen to just one station for too long because yeah. i'll get worn out of it so as long as i keep it fresh i think that's my favorite style the fa favorite style is uh neck new new style every every so every couple months or or every other day or anything. yeah whatever whatever that works out to be as long as you're not it gets hard if you're playing especially some bands well especially original bands that's hard to explain to a lot of original artists is they'll have 10 really solid songs and they're going to play those songs night after night after night after night well then it finally gets on the radio and people hear it and they're like man that's an amazing new song well you might have been playing that song every night for the last four years yeah it's not new to you and <laughs> it's not you new to you but those people want to hear that song because that's what's new to them. So, you know, you still got to go out there and put that show on like it's the first time you played that song. But somewhere you got to have an outlet where you're getting the rest of what you need musically out. Otherwise, you, you're, it'll temper your performance and really bring down the quality of what you do. Well, I think you find that too in, in some of these, these artists that have, have, have a bit of longevity. Um, I don't really want to drop any names, but you, you'll see them varying. Um, you'll see them varying like, oh man, that new band is featuring that, that artist because, and it's a little bit different than, than what we know them as. Right. And, and I think, and then, oh, they're going to get back with their other band and, and do a reunion tour. And it's kind of like, okay, I needed to step away for a little bit, go and just, get some of my juices out and then I can come back and revisit this thing and play these songs that, that are being demanded. I mean, you always hear about bands, their most popular songs are their least favorite to play really. Right. A lot of times. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's, that's the hard part, but I think you come to respect it later on. Like I think as a new artist, it's all about where am I going? What am I doing? Where am I taking the music? But as you get older, you appreciate how everybody's created a life attached to that. So even with cover bands, I think the reason why more experienced musicians in most cases are cover band artists, um, first off, you actually make money at it. That's different. You know, it's very difficult to make money as an original artist unless you're a hundred percent committed to it. It can't be a hobby yeah, no, unless you, it's one in a million. It can happen. Yeah. Or you're that super talent that just happens to time it right. Right. But otherwise, 
the ability to go out there and play, we'll say like a journey song, which has been played a trillion times everywhere. But people have something in their life where they remember hearing it and they attach emotions and feelings and life to it. And when you're playing those songs at a gala or something like that, people, it just takes them back to nostalgia. And that's what they want. They want to escape for an evening, have fun, not worry about everything else that's going on in the world and just to enjoy it. So. And there's those of us now that, that are, are products of the 90s that we want to hear those songs when we go out, right? So mm-hmm. like my wife's Christmas, the, my wife's works Christmas party we went and you know it was just man i remember this song back then. I've, i haven't heard no diggity and you know or whatever whatever no. it might be you know it right. was like and we didn't hear we i think there, there was probably a couple of journey songs or or a journey song that you brought sure. them up well because yeah. they're a pretty popular cover band song but um sure but you know it, it was a lot of a lot of newer you know newer tracks that it's just kind of knowing your audience right so if you're mm-hmm. you're in a bunch of bunch of bands that so then you can if somebody comes to you and says we want to we want to book you for a band you can say okay well what's your audience or what you know what are your guests going to be like okay right. i can take this band and tailor it to your your event which yeah which I is mean, one of the beauties of what i get to do now is i work with a lot of varied musicians that are I'll, we'll call them hired guns because these guys are pros guys and gals singers guitarists bass players the whole nine yards keyboardists and i've gotten to listen to a lot of them play in all the different ways and figure out what their styles and preferences are and and you'd ask me you know earlier in a conversation we had kind of about the poachers right yeah well the thing with the poachers up. was that was a request for a a, a waterfront festival that was going on up here that wanted a certain type of music and wanted a certain feel. So that band was put together for that by the request of what was needed. And we oh, were able wow. to gather together, we were gathered together, gather together some players. And we actually only had three practices before we went out and did that show. Well, it sounded great. Yeah, thanks. It looked like you, know, you're, you had people moving. So that's, yeah, would fun. somebody contact you if they, if they had an event that they wanted you to put together a, a band for? Well, I said they could go to the website I have, which is flyfootproductions.com and just send me a message on there or to me, Levi Watson at flyfoot.com. Email me that way. That really works best because especially with some of the travel I do, it's hard to, you know, when you're in show, you're in show. So answering the phone can be difficult sometimes, but, you know, texts and emails work way better because there's always a space here where I can respond and work things out and figure out what you, what you need and set those shows up and, cool Um, yeah we'll we'll put that down in the show notes too so look for that thanks man um so i i'm gonna kind of switch it up a little bit more to the producing side um so i've personally been writing a few songs and i'm finding it hard to find musicians to collaborate with so Mm -hmm. that how Mm -hmm. how would it what is your advice to somebody who's trying to put some songs together maybe doesn't want to be that band that's going to be a hundred percent into it, you know, 24 seven touring and just hitting the pavement, but still wants to put together an album with some other musicians. It's a great question. I think I've gotten this question online or even seen it online so many times. Uh, and I've really come to see that that's a piece of being a producer. And, and so what is that? I think making sure if you connect with a good producer, somebody who is really in the music scene, they're going to ask those questions. First off, like you mentioned, you've got some songs you want to write, you got some things you want to put together, but it's not necessarily the whole thing you're doing, but you still want the collaboration to put the stuff together. If you meet with a producer and talk about your project, they can do a few different things. One, they can find musicians that want to come in, uh, and collaborate with you. And sometimes they'll do that because they want you to collaborate with them on stuff. And that's the best time. Okay. Uh, every time you're looking for something and maybe you play guitar, I'm assuming. I, yeah. I mean, I play, I play guitar and I sing, I just kind of, I'm, I've been playing since I was like two and a half. I got sure. my first guitar. I didn't learn to play really until a couple of years ago. So sure. I just was like 
dabbling and you know a couple punk bands in junior high or whatever and then it's like and then I actually got some lessons and started looking into, oh, hey, the, I, if I play these chords together, it, this is actually, you know. And so then I've, I've just been writing songs, you know, from there. And, and uh, so I don't know. I think I have like 13 songs or something that, and I, I would say, what, what is the percentage of those songs that are any good, you know? Right. But Well, and I, I, I highly recommend even with that is sitting down, if you, if you record, your voice, because singing seems to be the primary, your primary instrument. Right. And then just, you know, specifically state, hey, this is just a general pathway in my head as a roadmap. Gotcha. And this is some of my chord progression and put that together. The intention is this is not the release recording. This is not the whole thing. But you kind of verbalize a few of the things you have in it and do some of those recordings and get that, you know. But, you know, for instance, shoot those to me. Let me listen to those and then I'll see what's here because, uh, finding people that resonate with it is important. Uh, if, right. if somebody listens to that, you know, I've had music come through my door that I'm like, this is not for me. This is not, I'm not feeling this, this you know, <laughs> right. and I'm honest with it. This, this may be fantastic music, but I'm not feeling where you're going with it. Right. So let me get it to my buddy, James over here. Let me get it to, okay. you know, my buddy, uh, you know, Mike over here and let him take a look at that because I think that may be something he's interested in because that's more their style. Um, but then there's other times where I'm like, I don't know, this is just a piece of a song. And I go, hey, let me work on that. You know, I want to do something with it. And uh, cool. Uh, that's one route. The other is really sending out something about a, a roundtable collaboration and say, hey, I'd love to get something going, you know, at a house or some club place, you know, maybe the community center or something and say, you know, looking for singer, songwriter, artists that want to collaborate in music, we're going to get together the first Friday of the month for the next few months. And then people come together and you start finding collaborations. I mean, that's stuff like that uh, put together by studios is how things like the Civil Wars were created. Oh, gotcha. Um, oh. So, I mean, open it, it, mics. Great. Yeah, open mics are great, too. Uh, open mics always work because you'll find people there. I mean, if somebody likes what they hear. They're going to ask you about it. Right. Where do you see yourself, you know, taking your, your business? You, you kind of mentioned that you're trying to consolidate your AV and kind of like have it more directed if, if yeah. I heard that right. Sure. Um, well, uh, so our Flyfoot production is right now currently two partners, Sharp, Bailey, and myself, and really getting some of those aspects a little bit more into her avenue versus my avenue so that we're balanced in the way we're doing the business. You know, there's just a lot of opportunities sitting in front of us that we'd love to capitalize upon. We'd love to actually participate in, but quality of what you do is critical. You know, your right. reputation really matters. So making sure that we, you know, take care of the artists the right way, you know, produce music the right way, you know, when we're doing an event for somebody, it comes off flawlessly, you know, all those kinds of things. You know, I want to make sure if, if you're spending your money, it's making you money. It's taking you somewhere. It's helping you get where you need to go. It's progressing what you have potential for. And there's a fine line there as to each company and group, what, where that works best for. So that's a really complicated, diluted answer to your question. No, but it, it makes sense. You know, we're, we're kind of uh, expanding the, the, traditional AV side of the business a lot. Okay. And I've got a group of guys that I'm working with right now that have some huge opportunities out there. People that are really solid, you know, video, lighting, audio guys, project managers, you know, the like, who have, who have been in the, the game for quite a while, who have, you know, they've been burned out of after a while doing the same thing. <laughs> and they're they're starting to head out on their own and they've got clients and people that are really interested in working with them and uh yeah. that they worked with years ago and various people uh, outside of anything they've done that reach out to them but they they're singularly uh focused on or an expert in one particular aspect of it gotcha um, negotiating yeah. things putting it together making sure the contracts work making sure everything flows from a management standpoint is usually something technicians typically don't have as much experience in right yeah so helping grab everybody together and say hey you really want to do this you want to do this you want to do this 
let's put it all together. Let's create a co-op component. Nice. And then do some of these shows and say, you know, if we've got a show, you know, out in your area, you know, what is that expertise? You know, I know somebody who can kick butt and get things done out there. Yeah. Let's collaborate with you and see how that works to get that show done the right way. And Very smart. as we do that, you know, as people participate more and more, they earn more and more of that show too as well. So it creates an avenue and an opportunity to grow a business on a wider scale than just one or two people trying to go out there and do it every day. And that, and that gets hard and you, you end up putting in so many hours and, and you're like, at a, at a certain point, you just kind of, am I, where am, am I just spinning my wheels or what, yeah. you know? And, and, and I think that I got to do a lot of video switching. I got to learn that aspect um, in one of my last jobs. And, and uh, there was something I really liked about it. Um, but I've always, I've always felt that talking to people and communicating, and this is probably why I liked video switching. Cause you are sitting with the, the client, you're working with the client, you're making sure that their show goes the way that they want it. And there's a lot of pressure on them usually. Right. Um, and so they're like, you make this happen for me. That's what I need from you, you know? Right. And then, and so there's something really nice about, about that relationship, but I can see that having somebody that can say, Hey, okay. Video switcher. What about the lighting? <laughs> what about the audio? Who's right? Cause there, there were events where I actually had to run audio too, you know, and, and, and you're in like, you're like, okay, I've got audio cues and I've got video cues and what am I, you know, where's my attention got to go. And, right. And it's, it, that was something, something that I was able to kind of push for like, Hey, we've got to get, have an audio guy here working the board, micing people up. If, if you want, because you're selling this show to them that it's going right. to go off. And if I've got five, five things I've got to pay attention to here on my plate, that I'm not going to be hitting that sound effect over here right. and miking that person up at the same time, you know? And, um, and I think when, I think that that aspect of having, cause, cause this is what I, what I hear you saying a little bit is that you have identified or have a, uh, Rolodex, so to speak of people that have certain talents and you're saying, Hey, let me, and you have clients as well that are coming to you. Let me take, take those clients. Let's build the show that they actually want sell them the show that they need and yeah. we'll provide what they need. And then it won't be just two guys, like you said, trying to pull a show off right. and they're, they've got a lot of talent, but they might be a little over their head in the scope of the event. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I love AV. Honestly, I, I, I'm so happy. I kind of, I kind of fell into it. Right. It was either uh -huh. that or driving a truck. <laughs> I mean, be switching on the dashboard while driving, right? That's right, right. Um, well, actually, it was. I, I went to film school first, and that was okay. kind of so. It was, it was really, it was film school and driving a truck. So it was either get my CDL or it was go to go to film school. And yeah. and uh, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be on beaches filming surfing. I'm gonna be up in the mountains filming snowboarding. All right, I'm in. You know, uh -huh. film school. <laughs> so and you know what you know so what did that oh, turn yeah. into uh well audio visual absolutely <laughs> that, that turned it's, into audio visual it's funny how different people get there from so many different ways and uh you know i work with a high schools a couple high schools do some stuff with them and uh do some stuff with some community center and and then the the new thing is i've been working with some theaters and I have a lot of friends that are theater background, all that sort of stuff, but I didn't per se have a theater background the same way. I mean, I've done enough of it that I, I know it through attrition, but not right, because right. I went up through a traditional road. So I've partnered with a couple of people that are theater people because you definitely, it's its own world. You know, you've right. got corporate venues. You know, I started up through the rock and music venues and car, you know, bars and all that stuff. It's actually where I started 
Okay. Then you have your corporate world and then you have your theater world. Right. And they're all different. hundred uh, percent. And film. Film, and film too, as well. Actually, I did a thing. show with a guy who was an assistant director for uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh. And he was showing me stuff with lights and he, I mean, it was like my, my brain was exploding just listening to him talk. And, you know, that was years ago. And it was amazing because it just opened up an avenue that I, you know, I was way more, you know, we need these lights to do this. Here's your angles here. You do this and this, not this particular type of bulb from this company at this particular time creates this effect on a camera at this rate, you know, like the super depth that's associated yeah. with films. And I thought the guy I was working with was an amazing light guy. And to him, the guy that mentored him would have thought what he was doing was garbage. <laughs> and so I'm looking at this going, wow, we've got a road to go. So you it's always know there's yeah, somebody out there you can learn from, you know, you got to keep your eyes and ears open all the time and taking everything you can because it's ever changing and ever growing. So very cool. Very cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck in your ventures. Yeah, Give your contact info out again. Yeah, sure. Uh, Levi Watson at flyfootproduction.com or just flyfootproductions with the S.com. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks for being on the show, Levi. Appreciate it, man. Been a pleasure. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you know when we put new videos out. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Brain Aqua. This has been Aqua Brain TV. Remember to keep your head up and keep those knees bent.